Hey everyone, welcome back to Pushing Film and today I'm going to talk a little bit about printing your film scans. So I know a lot of us might opt to get print when we get our film developed and scanned at a lab, but I feel like a lot of people actually don't print at all. A really common thing these days is to upload a photo online and then just forget about it and it just gets stored away on a hard drive and forgotten about. But I feel like when you print a photo, it really does it a lot more justice. It's the best way to actually appreciate, especially all your best shots and not just let it die on some hard drive. Also, this video won't go into anything about darkroom printing because as much as I love printing in the darkroom, I feel like that deserves an entire video or multiple videos of its own. And this is more just to sum up that DIY series that I set out to make about especially color negative film, making that more accessible with an at home process from scanning to converting to printing. Because especially with darkroom printing, printing color in the darkroom is a lot harder, a lot less accessible. So I find that for myself when it comes to making color prints, I'll usually tend towards digital type printing from scans. So I did a couple of videos recently about DIY scanning of film at home. And then a second part was about converting, especially 35 mil color scans using software called Negative Lab Pro. And it was all about making the process a bit easier and more accessible with the ideal aim, the final aim of printing those images. And one of the main things that is a deterrent for a lot of people is some of the complications that come with printing and things to do with resolution and paper options and especially cost. So what I'm gonna talk about is three methods that I find are some of the most common and accessible methods of getting your film scans printed and how they may vary in terms of pros and cons. Now I could go into a lot more detail about why it's important to actually print your photos, but I feel like there's a lot of inspiration for that out there, especially online with YouTube. I highly recommend my friend Cooper over at the Shoots with Coops channel. He did a video called Print Don't Post, Why You Should Be Printing and I highly recommend some of the podcasts by Ted Vieira I mentioned in my last video. So one of the most immediate and accessible ways to print your photos is similar to what happens when you opt to get prints straight from your lab, and that is what I would refer to as online or in-store bulk printing services. These are the kind of prints that are done through some mostly automatic large machine type printer, and it'll often involve going online, uploading photos and having them delivered to you, or heading in store, plugging in a USB into some kind of usually self-serve machine and it'll spit out the prints in your desired size and paper options. Now, one of the best things about these kind of prints is that they're really cheap, accessible. You can often find them in a lot of department stores. I tend to use uh, Big W a lot of the time, which is what we have here, but I'm sure there's plenty of camera stores and department stores that offer those sort of self-serve printing services. And again, one of the best things is that they're really cheap and accessible. So at least if you're not printing your images, doing something like that is better than nothing and it's great for printing out photos that you're going to stick in an album for proofing your images especially if you're shooting rolls of film for some kind of project and you want to see how they look like printed before making selects and making bigger higher quality prints from after that point. So one of the other pros with these type of cheaper printing services is that they're often less demanding on resolution. Resolution can be a confusing thing when you're getting into the printing world and especially when you tend to get film scans, it's already costing you a lot of money. So a lot of people might opt for a lower resolution scan and assume that you just can't print from it. But with these sort of cheap printing services, they're a bit less demanding on resolution um, and you often don't need as high a resolution as you would if you're printing on a fine art paper with some of the later methods I'm gonna mention. But with these cheap printing services come a few cons as well. The quality is obviously gonna be a little bit lower. You're gonna have much less options when it comes to paper. Usually there's just a luster and a gloss or something like that. And consistency can be really hit and miss. So what I found is I have to try a few places before I settle on one, where it tends to be that the staff probably know the machinery quite well, they're consistent, their stuff is maintained. And once I find a place that can spit out really good small prints for proofing and for filling up albums, I'll stick with them. So if you're going for those kind of prints, do shop around with the online places, especially it's a bit hard. So I prefer going in store and actually doing a couple of prints as tests. And when I find like a Kmart or Big W or camera store that seems to have a good machine and bunch of staff, I'll stick with them and go back. So I have consistent results. All right, so option two, it would be printing at home. So for myself, I use an Epson XP 15,000. And it's not necessarily a really high-end printer. And that's one of the things that scares people away is that they think they have to spend $1,000 or more on a printer. With my one, it only cost me about $250. I went onto Epson's website and they have a section for like factory seconds or refurbished units. And this was pretty much a new unit that might have had a, an issue that was repaired and sold back off. So I used that special and combined it with a voucher that I had from getting my Epson V800 scanner. And really saved a lot of money on something that might have cost four or five hundred dollars 
And that's what I really recommend doing is don't just pay full retail price if you can avoid it. Shop around, look for sales, and especially sometimes if it's last year's model or a previous model, it might be perfectly good, but places will heavily discount them. And also when it comes to buying paper, the same thing applies. I try really to avoid paying full retail prices because it's really simple. You shop around, especially looking at online websites. You can save heaps of money on some really good reputable paper brands. And that's another way it's gonna be a bit more accessible getting into that world of printing at home without having to pay a ton of money. So one of the best things about having a printer at home is it's right there on demand. Whenever you want a print, there's no wait time or turnaround or sending it off and going back with issues. You have full control over the print. So you have full control over how it's being edited before it prints out, over proofing, over paper choices. And that's, I think, personally, one of the most fun things is going through and looking at all the different brands and paper options you can get and fiber papers and mats and glosses and lusters and pearl and all that. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. And for a lot of people, it might be overwhelming, but you can always start with a couple of different basic paper options and work your way up because one of the first cons about printing at home is that there's gonna be a steep learning curve a lot of the time. You will probably go through some paper and ink trying to figure out the whole system and what I really recommend is doing tests on really small bits of paper first. So if you buy larger boxes, cut them up into really small sizes or get a pack of six by four or smaller paper and test on the small prints first. So that way you're gonna save a bit of money that would otherwise be wasted getting bad shots printed off on bigger pieces of paper. And the other great thing about that, because there's no middleman, if you're someone who is actually selling prints or wants to get into selling prints, you're not losing too much profit and you're actually getting full quality control with the prints that you're selling to your customers. That way you know that what you're delivering is exactly how you intended it to be. But yeah, one of the cons with home printing is that the costs can add up, especially if you're wasting a lot of money through prints. The cost of paper and ink especially can get really high. So again, I recommend shopping around, doing things like online shopping, price matching, and that way you'll reduce some of those costs. So when it comes to printing your film scans on something like uh, an inkjet printer at home is that it can require a bit more resolution than some of the cheaper express printing services. And what I generally recommend as a rule of thumb is that you'll need about 300 pixels for every inch that you're printing. So for example, with an eight by 12 inch print, you'll need about 2400 by 3600 pixels, I think which equates to about a medium resolution scan on most common lab scanners like the Frontier and Noritsu. So again, with that in mind, if you go up to something like a 12 by 18, you're gonna require 3600 by about 5400 pixels, which is equivalent to a high res scan. But since high resolution scans like that at a lab can get quite expensive, I do recommend trying some of the DIY methods of scanning film at home using a macro lens and software like Negative Lab Pro because I find that makes it a lot cheaper for me to pick that good shot out of a roll that I know I want to print big and make a scan using my DSLR and then get it exactly how I want it before I print it. But when it comes to most home printers like this Epson, a lot of the, the pro or semi-pro level Canon printers that I find are quite popular, you can only go so big. So it tends to be that about 13 inch width paper is about the, the largest you can print. And a lot of times you might want to go bigger sizes like 20 inch or higher. And unless you're spending thousands on a printer, at that point, I recommend trying the third option, which is going to a professional printing lab. So not only will you open up more options for larger sizes, but when you go to a professional printing shop or lab, they're gonna be able to assist you with getting the right choice of paper, especially if you're new to it, they're gonna make recommendations for what kind of paper is gonna suit which image, and you'll have full quality control. You know that someone professional and experienced at printing is overseeing that print, and you have usually some kind of guarantee that if it doesn't come out good, they can redo it, and a lot of the time they'll allow you to do small test prints just so you can see how it actually looks on different paper types. And this is highly recommended when you wanna go for something really big and important or prints that you're selling, or you're gonna put up on your wall, going to a fine art printing lab is gonna give you that full choice of getting the print exactly how you want it. And usually that means that the resolution of your film scan needs to be really high, especially because they also tend to print at somewhere around 300 PPI. And what they'll also offer sometimes is a scanning service. So a lot of these big and professional printing places might have access to a flex tide or Imicon type scanner or drum scanner even. But again, going to a large professional printing lab can get really expensive. So I do recommend shopping around, again, comparing prices, trying out some of the more independent and smaller printing places. A lot of the times they'll give you just as good a quality as a larger lab, but even if it just means a few less options of paper and other media types, it's a good starting point if you haven't ever had a photo 
professionally printed on fine art papers. All right, so those are three of the most common and I find most accessible ways of getting into printing your film scans. And it's always best to start small and work your way up. So one of the next things you'll probably wanna do after printing those photos is protecting or mounting them in some way. So if you're not making small prints to put in an album or in small frames around the house, you probably wanna get some kind of method of mounting them or most commonly put it in a frame. And a really good way to save money on what can be really expensive frames, especially for some of the bigger sizes, is go and shop around at charity stores. A lot of the time I find they have a ton of frames that you can flip through, find something that you actually like, and all you really need to do is just make sure that whatever print or photo might already be in there can be easily taken out and the frame can be repurposed. So that's a great way to get oftentimes a frame for only a few dollars that might have otherwise cost 50 or 100 or more if you were buying it brand new. So with secondhand frames, I find that's another great way to save a little bit more money and make the whole printing process a little bit more accessible. All right, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail about any of those particular printing methods, but if there is enough demand, if people really want a video going into more detail about either bulk printing or inkjet printing, I'd be happy to maybe do a video sometime down the track in the future, but let me know what you guys think. This is more about getting the idea out there, reminding you that it's worth printing your photos, especially if you're shooting film, you're getting such amazing colors and tones and a lot of the time these films that you're shooting were designed to be printed. And this is also a reminder that printing your images is a great way to share them with whether it's loved ones or friends or even just the greater community. It shouldn't always just be viewed on a small screen. I find that once you see a photo printed, especially big, if you haven't done it before, it's gonna give you so much more appreciation for that shot that you took. And whether you're holding the print in your hand or it's hanging on your wall, or you're giving it to a friend or family member, it's gonna have so much more sentimental value than just emailing it or posting it. So I highly recommend giving it a try if you haven't already. So doing things like print swaps can also be really fun and a great way to share photos with your friends besides just looking at them on a small screen and having that greater ability to critique photos amongst each other. So if you saw some of those previous videos about scanning using a macro DSLR setup and then converting with Negative Lab Pro, I had one of these images here that I scanned and converted during those videos and this one I've printed out on an A4 piece of paper by request from Jonathan over at King Japes channel and just through him seeing that image on my Pushing Film Instagram story he said hey man I'd love that as a print do you want to do a print swap so I've got that here and how cool is that that I'm going to send this image printed halfway across the world and get one back from him and and it's just so much more valuable than just seeing an image posted online. All right guys, so I hope this video inspired you a little bit to print some of your film scans, especially if you're not already. And I hope it showed you that it can be a little bit more accessible than you might've thought, getting into printing, starting small, making your way up. And what I'd also like to do is give away a print in a similar size to the one I just showed you. So all the details for that will be up on the Pushing Film Instagram page. So I'll put up a post within the next couple of days and It'll be a selection of small images that you'll choose the one that you'd like and I'll pick one person to actually receive a free print. So all you need to do is go follow Pushing Film on Instagram. There'll be a link to that in the show notes. And also feel free to comment on what you would like to see in any future videos if you need more information about either inkjet printing at home or getting into fine art printing or matting and framing, whatever it is. And hopefully one day down the track, if there's enough requests for that, I can do a video in the future. So. Thanks for watching this video about printing your film scans and I'll catch you on the next episode of Pushing Film.